Welcome to Empowering Lives with Purpose, and I am your host, Kimberly Hobbs. I am the founder of Women World Leaders, and I am just so grateful that you have decided to join us today. And today, I am welcoming our guest, which is Bethany Beal from Girl Defined. Bethany, we are so happy that you decided to join us. Thank you. This is such a treat. I love getting to connect with other women in ministry and just the passion to share to young women and women. So this is a huge privilege for me. Thank you for having me on. Amen. Amen. This is going to be fun. Ladies, our desire is to strengthen you, encourage you, empower you in the name of Jesus. And that's what we love to do. And Bethany and her sister, who uh, co-founded Girl Defined, do this for young women. So we are all in the empowering, encouraging uh, mode to help women around the world. So that's our desire today. Um, Ephesians 2.10 says that we are God's masterpiece, created anew in Christ Jesus to do the things that he planned for us long ago. Ladies, God has a plan for each and every one of your lives, and we're just here hoping that maybe through something we're sharing today, it might spark you into finding what that purpose is, that what God has planned for your life will be um, revealed to you. Mm -hmm. So I want to share a little bit about Bethany before we get started, and um, it's just been a treat that I've had talking to her already. She is from Texas, and she's head over heels in love with her best friend, David, and together, um, her and her husband have a little David Jr., which she loves. Uh, As I said, she is the co-founder of Girl Defined Ministries, which is huge and just explosive for young women, college students. It's amazing. And we just can't wait to talk about that today. She is passionate about spreading the truth um, to biblical about biblical womanhood through writing, speaking and mentoring all of these young women. So Bethany, I love that you have a heart to speak to young women about femininity and sexuality. And unfortunately, at the age they're at these teens and college students and um, we can really get distracted by what we look like and um, who we want to be with and all of that just comes into play. And so you are here to kind of address some of that and be a help to some of these women to just guide and direct and encourage them. So how did you find this niche about um, helping young women? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, not only am I a girl, so I grew up (laughs) with the similar struggles, similar, you know, just wrestling with my own worth and identity and just even, you know, thoughts about, okay, God's designed for sex and purity and all of that. But God also gave me four sisters. So we had a lot of girls in our house growing up. And then obviously lots of friends and just surrounded by a large sisterhood. And so for me growing up and just not only experiencing the, just the the struggle of being a woman in today's society, but then seeing the next generation, they not only have, you know, the same internal struggles, but the social media and the media boom that they have to deal with is just over overwhelming. And it's, you know, it's, it's so hard. And just seeing the battle that so many young women are facing and wrestling with, because, you know, day after day, you know, they seem to have images and messages just pouring into their, their lives, telling them what, what it means to be a woman and who they need to be in order to have worth and value. And so my heart really in all of that, in in everything that I do is to just kind of redirect their eyes to Christ and to let them know that, Mm -hmm. you know, 
there, there's a strong message out there that says you have to look a certain way, be a certain way, achieve a certain status, but that's not what the gospel is. The gospel is Jesus saying you have worth and value because I've given it to you and no one can take that away from you. And I am not asking you to be something, you know, I am giving you everything and it's a gift that you just have to receive. And I, I hope that the next generation can really grasp that and that uh, young women will stop striving after, you know, a certain standard of beauty that's always changing, but instead we'll just say, God, thank you for giving me worth. Thank you for making me intricately. And, and I'm going to live for you and not, not worry about measuring up. That's right. That's, that's my heart and passion. And I feel like, you know, that's something that uh, is the next generation is only, you know, they only have more and more that they have to wrestle with because of kind of the crazy world that we live in. And it's so very sad because we see the wrestling, we see the struggling, we see what's going on with our young teens and, and college students and, uh, and just the, the issues that they're getting into yeah. that um, are heartbreaking, they're heart-wrenching. Yeah. And you and your sister have just developed this passion to reach out and help them. And it's just beautiful. And a girl to find is pretty spectacular. Let me tell you, ladies, I mean, they are reaching a around the world their following is huge because you know what god is blessing it he's mm-hmm. blessing what they're doing because they are pointing young lives to jesus so i am just so proud of what you are doing bethany oh. and grateful as a christ follower that there are these young women like you and your sister that are doing this um so you help them toward you know finding the lord and um this past fall bethany you wrote something, um, you blog and you write, you've got five different books out. I mean, you are a busy young woman <laughs> married, of course, uh, with, yes. but, um, that passion is just flaring in you. And you wrote something. Um, it was 10, 10 steps of, uh, or 10 tips to keep your heart mm-hmm. focused on God. And this is something that all of us women, it's not just yeah. the young women that can benefit from it. But we're going to go through these today, um, the 10 things that can really keep your heart focused Mm -hmm. on the Lord. And if you know any young uh, women that might want to just join in with us and and hear about Girl Defined, uh, invite her to listen to this podcast. So the number one, the number one uh, tip that you shared, Bethany, was the importance of getting into God's word. Mm -hmm. You want to go off with uh, starting there right now. Yeah. You know, it's getting in the word. It's, it seems so simple. Like, okay, all I do is open up my Bible or pull up my Bible app on my phone. And, you know, I just, you know, there we go, but it's so hard. And I feel like there are so many distractions. And although we have God's word at our fingertips, we are so blessed for so many of us to just literally be able to, you know, get on our phones and, and see an app and, you know, or even have, you know, direct messages that, can send us verses, you know, we have more access than ever before, but we also have so many temptation, uh, uh, you know, distractions and temptation to look other places. And, and so my encouragement, not only to myself and to every woman, but to especially to young women is to just set this up, set the phone aside for just a few minutes during the day, open up God's word, because God's word is really like our guide and our map. And he left it for us to show us how we should think and, you know, what our purpose is and those huge life questions that we all want to know the issues that we're facing. God's word has so much wisdom and so much clarity for us. And so my prayer is that young women just you know, even if it's just starting small, just a few minutes, maybe it's just, you know, reading the proverb of the day, just saying, okay, today's, you know, say the 17th and I'm going to open up and read Proverbs 17, even just starting small can be huge. So that's my encouragement. Maybe just five minutes today, put the phone away, open up your Bible, or just get on that app, read a passage from God's word and then build from there. But it is one of the most foundational things that we as women need to do is to be in God's word, to have that anchor, to have that foundation. So we even know how we should think. Amen, Bethany. And I know that that is what you did as a young woman in Christ follower, you got in the word, you know, and God got a hold of your heart Yeah. and look at what he's done with your life because of it. The word is transforming ladies. It will transform your life because your mind will become renewed. Oh and, yeah, yes, absolutely. I know. And it can, 
for the young women listening, I know it can seem like oh, the Bible, it's so outdated. How's it going to really help me? You know, but I can tell you even, you know, even just from personal experience, being a modern woman living in this world, you know, kind of going through some of the big transformational moments of life over the past 10 years, I have never felt more free than when I have been you know, in God's word and really striving to live out his design for my life as a woman, that's when true freedom has been found in my life. Not when I've been listening to the messages of culture or just following my heart that has truly not brought me like happiness and joy and freedom. It's really left me enslaved to this, you know, you know, measuring up and trying to find my worth and guys or whatever it is. And the more I've been in God's word, the more actually joy and life and freedom I've had. So I encourage women and young women to try it and just say, okay, God, you're not trying to just destroy my life. You were actually for me and you want my good and your word helps me to get there. Amen. And, and God's word is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It's alive. It is alive. And that's why we get so much from it because, Mm -hmm. you know, it's truly when it comes alive in your life and you see it happening, there's nothing like it. It's like you just crave more and more of it. Oh, yes. The appetite grows. (laughs) The appetite does grow. Praise God. So the next thing, number two, you have is uh, praying for strength. And oh, this is a strong one. We need to be praying continuously for strength. Yeah. Take off on that one, Bethany. I know. You know, I think about my own life and I think about how, how difficult it can be, especially in those formative years, you know, high school, college age, when you are just trying to figure out as a woman, like, what, what am I doing with my life? And, you know, you seem to be being pulled in so many different directions and, and you know, there are so many pressures and here's where you need to be and here's what you need to be doing. And, I realized, wow, I don't have to do this on my own. God is there for me and he wants to empower me and give me his strength to follow him, to live for him, to choose to live for his glory alone. And when I realized that I didn't have to do it on my own, that he literally will empower me and give me the strength, I was just so comforted and just like, wow, okay, I don't have to just muster this up. You know, Jesus died. He left me the power of the Holy Spirit within me, his helper to strengthen me, to give me that boldness and courage to stand up for truth, to give me that courage to say no to that relationship or no to that party I know I shouldn't go to. Um, We don't have to do it on our own. So praying and asking God, God, strengthen me, give me boldness, make me a courageous woman. We can cry out to God and ask him for that. And we can say, God, I don't even know what I should be doing. I don't know how I should be thinking, help me. We, you know, we don't have to have all the answers. We can cry out to him. And so as a woman, how comforting to know God is on our side. He's on our team. He's left us the Holy spirit to give us that strength. It's it is so comforting to know we don't have to do this on our own. So comforting. And the, again, a scripture verse, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He gives us that strength. Yes. So know it. When you ask for it, pray for it. He gives you that strength. To Amen. Go on. Amen. So the next thing is uh, number three, find a mentor, right? You need to, we all need those, those uh, connections that we can go to somebody that's going to pour into us. Talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. And I have a mentor myself. So this is something I have not only, I, you know, see in scripture, this beautiful design of, you know, women mentoring women that we see in Titus. Uh, But this is something that, you know, although I have a ministry where I am on camera a lot or behind the microphone, uh, mentorship is you know, that kind of one-on-one discipleship mentorship where you, whether it's one-on-one or just a small group of women, basically you asking someone or, you know, joining a small group and saying, Hey, this, this woman's just a few steps ahead of me or a few years older than me. Maybe she's many years older than you. I want to link arms with her and learn from her and, you know, learn from her experiences, glean wisdom. You know, when I'm trying to make that difficult decision about a relationship or struggling with something with my sexuality, instead of just Googling or, you know, going on, you know, a social media app or, you know, asking my friends, I I should ask a woman who has a little bit more experience and can take me to God's word and show me there's just so, so much, um, you know, direction that can happen through that. So I, that if there's one step that I would want every young woman to take in their life, it would be to find an older woman 
to mentor them. It has been so life-changing for me. And for the young women that I mentor one-on-one, I know it's been life-changing for them. It can be scary. I know it can be so scary to meet with someone and start sharing your heart and pouring out your guts, but you can start small. You know, you can just start by going through a book, you know, just start by reading. You can even read Girl Define, the book I wrote in. There's questions in there and you can say, hey, can you just go through this book with me? And, you know, let's talk about the questions. You can start very small, but the, the wisdom that you can glean from that and the direction a young woman can glean from that is huge. And if you're an older woman, reach out to the younger women and mentor them. They need you. So it's, it goes both ways. It does. I, and I am so blessed. I mentor so many young women right now and, um, and young women, they may be in their thirties and forties, but it blesses my heart to be able to so true them and you know, it's just like, wow, God, bring me more, you know? So yes, Yes. you ladies may be a blessing to an older woman. If you go to them and ask them, yes, mentor, please pray about that. Pray that God brings you the right woman that will mentor you. We all need a mentor. I have one. Bethany has one. It's very important. So don't go through this life without a mentor and think that you can do this on your own. Okay. It's too hard. (laughs) We need the sisterhood. We need each other. Amen. Amen. The next thing is confess your sin. Oh, this is important daily. Bethany, I go before the Lord every single morning and I wouldn't even think to go before him with my heart unconfessed. Like I have to go in there and ask all these, you know, God search my heart, know my heart, expose anything that shouldn't be there. It's important, right? Yeah. And you know, young women can feel so intimidated by this because we receive emails every single day or DMS on, you know, Instagram from young women saying, I've never told anyone this, could God really forgive me for this thing I did? And they just feel scared and, and almost like why God's just big, scary in the sky. Why, why would I go to him? And I love first John one nine, which says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. So remembering Jesus came to earth and died on the cross, not because we are perfect, but because he knew we were sinners. He knew we needed forgiveness. And so knowing that he promises to forgive you if you come to him. So instead of being afraid and running away from him and just continuing on with the shame and the guilt, go to the, you know, fall on your knees before Jesus in prayer and say, God, I trust this promise of yours. And I know that no sin is too big for you to forgive. And even though I feel so guilty over this, I know that that should drive me to my knees to find that forgiveness in you. So instead of running away from God, I encourage encourage you young women to go towards him and look up first John one nine and, and believe that promise for yourself that if you confess, he will forgive you. And you can hold on to that and know that he's not going to be shocked by what you have to share with him. He wants you to come to him. He wants you to share that with them and he will forgive you for that. Good word, Bethany. Great word. And you know, when we have sin in our life, ladies, there, there is a block of communication between you and the Lord and and you want to hide because of your shame and and your guilt, but we're just here to encourage you and get that sin out. Like Bethany said, give it to the Lord. He knows everything anyway. He knows what it is. Exactly. Voice to him and tell him you're sorry from your heart. He forgives you instantly as far as east and from west. And he remembers them no more. So that is very important. If you want to focus on God, get rid of the sin, confess it. The next thing is getting rid of lies in your life. Okay. This is a good one. And I'm sure you've got lots to share here. Go ahead. You know, I remember a time in high school where I was kind of got into Christian romance novels and, you know, it wasn't, some might say that's not a sin in and of itself, but you know, I was struggling with my thoughts internally. I was struggling with a lot of lust internally on the outside. I looked like a great Christian girl, but on the inside, I was wrestling with my thoughts and I was, you know, fantasizing and just doing, imagining all sorts of, you know, just kind of erotic scenes in my mind that no one else knew about, but I knew and God knew. And it was not, it was not healthy. It was not honoring to God. It was not, I was not honoring, you know, God's design for sex. I was, you know, really going to town up there and these Christian romance novels were not helping me. And so I, I heard, I don't even know, I heard a message somewhere, maybe, I don't know what it was, read in a book. And they were just talking about how you've got to get rid of these, whatever these messages are that you're allowing into your life that are really lies saying, okay, you need to have this romantic relationship in order to be happy, or you need this sexual experience in order to be happy. And I was just fueling that lust in my life. 
And it wasn't until I took action, you know, like I took action and I gathered up all the books that I had in my room because, you know, I didn't have social media growing up. So for me, I had these physical copies of books, you know, or I didn't, you know, and I put them in a big black garbage bag and I threw them in the dumpster. And that was such a freeing step for me. And I even went through, you know, all my music and looked through my room and saw, okay, are there any other things that are fueling this struggle that I'm having? Let me take steps to rid my life of this. So for a young woman today that might be looking, okay, maybe I need to take a break from social media, or maybe I need to, you know, unfollow some of these people that I'm following that are just pouring these messages into my life that are not helping me in this, this struggle, you know, like help yourself out by not allowing these messages in, whether it's movies you're watching or music, like it really does impact us. So taking that step towards ridding yourself of those things, you know, it's, it doesn't, I mean, your struggle is going to immediately go away, but it can be a huge step towards finding freedom. And it can really enable you to kind of walk in the right direction by not just filling your mind with, with these lies that are, you know, fueling, fueling That's the struggle. Right. The enemy is a roaring lion and he mm-hmm. is seeking to devour you ladies totally. And you know what? He just wants to pour those lies into you in whatever avenue he can get in, Absolutely. whether it be the social media, the television or the romance novels or whatever it is you're reading. Um, oh my goodness. Be on guard. Okay. So yes. get rid of those lies that are being filtered in through yeah. all these different ways um, and means and just which brings us to our next one. Number six yeah. is filling your mind with truth. Mm-hmm. How important is that, Bethany? Yeah. Just fill with the truth of the Lord. Yes. Yeah. And I think those two really do go hand in hand because we, like for me, I could get rid of the lies, but I really needed to pr- replace those lies with truth and remember, okay, what is the truth? What is God's design for sexuality? What is God's design for sex and purity and, you know, relationships. And so for me, I decided, okay, I really do enjoy reading. So I, you know, I was reading Christian romance novels. So instead, why don't I get some really great books from older Christian women that they've written and, and see what they have to say. And I, started to fill my mind with just this wisdom from older godly women. And it really changed the way that I think, and I don't even know some of these women personally, you know, but I was mentored by them through their books and just their understanding of God's word and unpacking like biblical womanhood or, you know, God's purpose for my life or prayer, just digging into these topics was huge. And I know that you know, in our, in the world right now, we have so much access to good truth like this, you know, through whether it's podcasting or YouTube, there are so many great Christian channels and Christian ministries that we can follow. And that is such a huge blessing to help fill our minds with truth. So obviously we need to be in God's word, but getting mentored even virtually is an incredible opportunity to help push us in the right direction. So just, just like this, if you're here watching way to go, because you are, you know, you're equipping yourself and helping your, you push yourself towards Christ, which is huge. So I'm just, I'm so proud of you for being here and for, for taking the time to do this. Amen. Yes. Amen. Ladies. Next thing is find a solid community, right? You get a mentor. That's, that's a good thing. And then find a community how important to be connected to the body of Christ. Let's go there. Because I think it's, you know, community and the people we surround ourselves with, um, it makes such a bigger difference in our life than I think we even realize. And I know for me, you know, finding community, finding, you know, the people who are closest to me, who are going to help me go in the direction that I really want to go is huge. And, you know, I was talking to a girl the other day and she has a job and, you know, she was saying that, you know, she's kind of college age and she was saying it's so hard because so many of the people, her coworkers that she works with, they want to go out and party and do stuff that just isn't helping her. It's not good for her soul. She knows it's not good for her. Um, and so she, you know, she was like, I need, I need to get some community. So that way when they invite me out to party, I can say, sorry, I, you know, got something else going on. And then she knows like, Hey, I can go hang out with some of my girlfriends who I know are, are going to push me in a good direction. And so seeking that don't, don't just wait for people to come knocking on your door and saying, Hey, why don't you come hang out with us? Go after it, find a good Bible believing church, continue digging into resources like this that you're connecting with, go after those friendships, because it, 
is huge in helping you. You know, it's like the Bible says there's strength and numbers, there's strength. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. When you have those girls, that sisterhood, those women around you, it's going to equip you when you're feeling weak, when you're struggling, you'll be able to call them up and say, Hey, they're inviting me to this, but I know I shouldn't go help me. Give me something to do. Tell me what to say. You know, it's, it's amazing to have that community. It's so supportive and really strengthening. Yes. And God provides them through so many different avenues. They're out there, ladies, just find them. You found us. So looking, you know, and there, there's something for everyone and God will put you in the right one. He knows where you belong. So just get, just get around a group of solid believers. It's so very important. Mm -hmm. The next thing, number eight is accountability. Oh, we can hide and think we're hiding, but when you have an accountability partner, let me yeah. tell you, they are going to hold you accountable and you want the right accountability partner, right? Yes. yes. Oh, I know. The right kind of accountability partner. You want someone who is going to speak truth into your life when you don't necessarily want to hear it. You know, um, you want to have someone in your life that you trust that will say, Hey, you know, like you really shouldn't be doing that. Or you're, you know, you're in this relationship or you are struggling with this, but here's what God's word says. Like you, it's very clear. So what are you going to do? You know, sometimes we just need that person who can lovingly, but very boldly and clearly kind of hold our feet to the fire in a sense. And they're not just going to pat us on the back and be like, Oh girl, it's okay. We all struggle. It's no big deal, but no, find someone. And you know, if this can be the, within your mentor, if you find a mentor and they hold you accountable to whatever it is, maybe you just want them to hold you accountable to reading God's word on a daily basis. Maybe you want someone to help you, you know, with staying accountable to memorizing scripture, or maybe you're struggling and you went through a breakup and you're tempted to, you know, go back to that relationship or, you know, stalk them on social media or whatever it is. And you want someone to say, Hey, no, don't do that. And I'm going to ask you about it next week. When I see you finding someone like that is huge because you know, we're we're human. We need help. We need support. So don't be afraid to, to tell someone to ask you the hard questions because they're, they're there to help you get where you actually want to be going. So I I wish I I had done that more when I was younger, but I'm grateful now that I have people in my life that will tell me the truth, even when I don't want to hear it. Amen. Same with me. We all need it. We all need it. No matter where we are in life, ladies, we need accountability partners. The next thing is don't dabble in temptation. Okay. Nip it in the bud. Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, You know, why, why do we, why do we think we're the ones that will be, oh, I know other people have struggled with this, but I'll be the one that will handle it differently. Like we have to remember that we do have the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, but we also have this free will to choose, you know? And so if you are, you know, say you are talking to a guy and you realize, wow, he, you know, he is not a good influence on me. He's inviting him, me over to his house late at night, instead of saying, Oh, I mean, it'll probably be fine. I'll just go. I mean, I really want the attention. Don't just say no. Okay. Nip it in the bud, you know, tell him no, delete his number, call a friend, do whatever you need to take it seriously. Like I say, help yourself out with this. You know, I hear from girls all the time who are saying, Oh, you know, especially the younger Jason generation, like a guy's asking me for nude photos. What do I do? I'm like, block his number, block him on social media. He is literally so disrespectful asking you for that stuff. Be bold and just say, nope, I do not need this in my life. I'm not going to let this temptation sit here. I'm going to delete this, get rid of this. And we as women need to, you know, kindly, but be bold and say no. And, you know, we need to learn to say no. We need to learn to, to be firm and, and not take that second look, whatever that looks like in your life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, these are so good. It's like, oh, we could stay here all day. Um, I know. <laughs> acknowledge, acknowledge that life is a spiritual mm-hmm. battle. Oh, this is good. And God's yeah. word says for our struggle is not against flesh and blood ladies, but against rulers and against principalities and authorities against powers of the dark world. Yeah. Um, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. That's Ephesians 6, 12. We have a spiritual battle going on day and night in our lives, ladies. So let's, let's talk about the spiritual battle. Yeah. You know, I think it's so important that we acknowledge that because if we don't, we can kind of buy into this mindset that, oh, 
I became a Christian. So God's kind of like a vending machine. I, you know, put my quarter in and he gives me what I want out and life's just going to be easy. And that's not the reality. You know, we do live in a fallen world. And one day, you know, as believers, we'll get to be in heaven forever and new heavens, new earth. It's going to be amazing. But for now we do live in a fallen world and there is a spiritual battle going on. And if we do not recognize that we are so naive and thinking that, oh, we've got this, we, you know, no problem. I'm, I'm just gonna, you know, live and it'll be all fine. Like we've got to put our vigilant glasses on and be on the lookout, have our eyes open saying, okay, there's an enemy that is after me. He wants to see me fall. He wants to see me turn from Jesus. He wants to see me give into temptation. So I have the power of the Holy Spirit. So I know that I can overcome that, but I've got to be vigilant. I've got to be looking for those lies. I've got to be aware, remembering that it is a spiritual battle. So I think it's just a change of perspective and recognizing that, acknowledging that and being aware so that we can be, be in the fight so that we know it's a fight that we know we're in a war and we, you know, we're not naive to that. I think that's so important to, to just have that perspective. So important. So very important. Wow. Wow. Our time is about up my sweetie, but you know, it's been a wonderful privilege to be able to talk to you here, but what can you leave our ladies with? Um, again, just that shot in the arm that will help them Mm. focus on the Lord. I want to share a verse. God is working in you ladies, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Isn't that comforting? Knowing that our God, the God of the universe is working in you to do what pleases him. Wow. That's Philippians 4. 413. Encourage our ladies listening. Yeah. What can you leave them with to um, just yeah. hold in their mind today? Uh, yeah. My encouragement would be to remember that your purpose on earth is not to glorify your name, to make your name great, um, to, you know, just to be all about self, which is the message we hear all around us, but really to make God's name great, to glorify him. You really hear us as ambassador, his servant. And when we have that change of perspective, it, it can, it can transform so much about our lives because we remember, oh, well, you know, whatever season I'm in, you know, whether I'm single or married, my purpose is to glorify God. And for me, that's been so life-changing because I remember, okay, God, if, you know, if I'm just changing poopy diapers today with my little son, I can do this for your glory. I can live for your glory. If I'm on a wonderful, you know, connecting with a ministry, I can do that for your glory. And it really frees us up from that focus on self that can be really, you know, just kind of depressing and trying to, trying to be good enough. Instead, it's like, it's not about me. It's about God. So that would be my encouragement to just really ask yourself, okay, who am I living for? Am I living for myself or am I living for God? And what changes do I need to make in order to, to make that happen in my life? Oh, amen, honey. Thank you so much. Thank you for that encouragement. All of your words have just been empowering and encouraging words to live by. So And thank you for sharing them with Women World Leaders. So ladies, if you want to hear more from Bethany and we get to uh, interview her sister for next week, which we are really excited about too. That's But if you want to hear more about this um, sisterhood that has come together with this unbelievable ministry, hundreds of thousands of followers, I mean, they are the bomb. They are awesome. So you can check them out at girldefined.com. And I just want to close right now and just again say thank you, ladies, for being here, for joining us. We have so much fun when we're on here together, learning together, sharing together stories of empowerment. Um, I just want to share really quick that Women World Leaders has a magazine coming out in January of 2021. It's going to be full color and gorgeous, beautiful. And if you would like a copy of that, please go to womenworldleaders.com and go to the contact us section and ask for your free subscription. Yes, I said free because what God so freely gave to us in Jesus Christ, that is his son, we said, how can we charge for this? And it is going to contain the gospel of Christ, stories of women, and it just empowering you and strengthening you in the Lord. If you want this magazine, please go to the website 
and get your copy. Give us your email for the uh, digital copy or your home address, and this will not be shared, ladies. Also, uh, we have Courageous Steps of Faith coming out, and it's launching this month. So please, ladies, these are stories of women taking courageous steps of faith to inspire you to take your own courageous steps of faith. This book is incredible, powerful, and will totally fuel you to go forward with inspiration and amazing, amazing scripture. So that's Courageous Steps of Faith. And you can also get that through womenworldleaders.com at, uh, in our shop. So we're excited about that book. Ladies, from his heart to yours, we are Women World Leaders. Thank you, Bethany, for joining us today. You are a sweetheart. We just appreciate you. Uh, all content is copyrighted by Women World Leaders and cannot be used without express written consent. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.